on the attack and the defense, it is less, there's definitely a, le a lot less cavalry than there was in the first matchup, um, but there is definitely cavalry being used. Players are swapping back and forward as things stand, but on the defense, Ragnarok, uh, has, his squad has a decent set of palace guards, you've got some javelins, you've got grey hairs in there, you have ISGs, you've got Fort Abrasio units, you've got the Senjis, uh, some flamers in there as well. So whether they, I think they might be thinking about uh, defending A uh, at this point, but we'll wait and see how that goes. Couple of couple of musket players. The rest of them are all kind of heavy classes here. One pike, and then the rest of them are all heavy classes on the uh, on the defense, on the attack. Similar strategy. Lots of pikes. Lots more pikes this time around. Actually, a lot more pikes. Um, so all medium hero classes, but they're bringing in gray hairs. There's some. Fort Abrasio in there, you've got IPGs, you've got some Javelins, uh, some some units of Cav, uh, uh, there's Ke uh, Keshiks, that is a, uh, it says Grey Hair Garrison, but that's really Cataphract Lancers, but hey-ho. Mark of G is even joining the attackers, oh Jesus, bias much, <laughs> not at all, not at all. Guys, sorry I didn't have a, what do you may call it at this point in time, a, uh, uh, predictions because I literally got in quite late just after my meal so I was able to make this time but I wasn't able to set up properly as quickly as I could but there will be predictions for the next matchup which is Surfslayers versus Holy Crusaders which will follow this matchup um, very very soon after this match is over with we will be starting pretty quickly afterwards um, into the next matchups so guys tell me in chat who do you think is going to win this one is this going to be a pawn guard win to win it 2-0 and grab the full three points. Or is this going to be a defensive hold here for uh, Odin's Legion? Will they manage it? Um, it's going to be a tough ask. And like I said, we already know how strong Pongar guys are. They haven't lost a battle yet. Well, haven't lost an overall set series. They have lost one battle against Surf Slayers, But overall, a tied match. So it could be uh, could be interesting to see if, if Odin's Legion can grab a point from this one. Can they, can they potentially stop the onslaught that is Pongard. We'll wait and see. It's a very good learning experience no matter what for Odin's Legion though because this is playing against one of the best teams that have got so much experience in tournaments and stuff as well. So no harm done really. It's all about learning and the more you're going to do take part in these the better. Oh and we're already going to restart. There you go. Blue wins already. Everybody's left. Left it already. We're going to start again here at this point. We are going to start again. What I can do as that happens. I don't know what happened, but we'll start again here. Somebody brought something that was potentially wrong. I don't know, but... We're going to have to wait up. We're going to have to wait. Start a prediction, guys. There you go. Here's your predictions are up. You can do the predictions for this one. Let's see if it comes up quickly enough for me to get into another one. They need to set something up. I don't know what, what it was that they did wrong prior to that one there. This is my next matchup too, and I can't even be involved yet. <laughs> Let's see if this matchup is up. There we go. Pongar versus Odin's Legion is up. And we are back in. What was banned? Yeah, so Falconetti, Bunner, uh, Falconetti Gunners and Zykillian Militia are both banned. Bet you wish you banned Outriders. I bet they did. Is <laughs> even joking, the attackers. So yeah, yeah, attackers by as much. I'm not attacker by as. I, I know the guys from Pongar are fantastic players, very well experienced in the, the full side of... Uh, 
kind of the tournament side of things. So it's it's pretty easy. I wish a thousand wishes. <laughs> Why no Raiders for defenders? The fuck fails. It fails. It was. We'll wait and see. Things have changed. Things have changed. Feel JF Card was just feel toxic meta. <laughs> Right, okay, we're going to try and get into this match as quickly as we can. You guys are seeing it, obviously, as things are a little bit delayed, but this is... If we get people moved into where we need to be, I need to be put into the casting side of things. If somebody can sort that out for us, we'll be Gucci. There we are. We are 15v15. CB is in here. We're waiting on one more for the defense, and we are be good to start again. Oh, hi, Method, Danny. How are you doing, buddy? How are you doing? Guys, welcome to the stream. Sorry about the five-minute delay as well, guys, but it's because it is a Rivals tournament. We don't want anybody to kind of sneak peek to see what's going on in the attacks and defenses and kind of give away strategies. Um, but obviously, for you guys in chat, uh, thank you for being here. I really do appreciate the views and everybody else coming along to the CB Rivals tournament. It's been a fantastic series so far and we are currently at 1-0 here for Pongard versus Odin's Legions. It was a fantastic effort um, from the, the Sally out as a defence from Pongard and that uh, got them their win and whittled down the units down so quickly. Um, in terms of the overall tournament note, it's been a fantastic tournament so far. These are the last matches up of the, the overall group stages and it will be the overall matchups will be finishing up soon enough for the final stages where we'll have a third place match off and a first and second place match up which is going to come very soon at the start of May here. Um, I will get the date, the correct finishing date for you guys. Um, it was somewhere in the chat, but there's so many different pages, I get myself lost. <laughs> yeah, the finals are on the 1st of May. That's it. The 1st of May, we will have the finals. Same again here for the attack and defense. I assume not much have changed from the, the previous setups. Um, still kind of similar unit setups here, similar unit setups, you've got some bow riders from Luko Strel. but yeah, we're not allowed to artillery remember guys, so it doesn't matter what artillery they carry, none of them can be used, nothing can be used for artillery whatsoever, um, but yeah, there's not really much of a difference here, still a kind of similar setup, there is some cavalry on the side of Pongard for the attack, not as much as they had obviously on the defence with all the outriders that they had, there's no outriders really that's uh, for the defence, apart from Drayton's set of Outriders. There's just a one set, but we're all Gucci. We've got some Flamers. We've got Iron Reapers, Palace Guards, Javelin Sergeants, Fort Abrasio, and the good old Imperial Pike Guards and Senjis. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one to see what happens here. I'm hoping Odin's Legions can put up a good fight here in the defence. Hopefully, it'll be a really interesting watch. A lot more uh, infantry based this time around in comparison to the last matchup for Pongard. So, it'll be good to see them using their uh, cav uh, their infantry instead of their cavalry this time. Um, they'll be using their cav inside the gates, I assume. Um, the ones that do have cav with them. But there's a few that start off with cav just in case um, Odin's Legion decided to do a similar trend and come outside and uh, try to, to whittle down the units at the very start. Right, let's get this webcam away and you can see me. I was supposed to get the webcam away last time around, but I was I'm so stupid and I forget about it. I forget about that, pushing that button throughout the whole tournament. But we are here, we are good to go, and we are watching Critical as things stand. But we're going to go up into the air just to see the overall view and the setup. Odin's Legion, what are they going to do on this defense? They are getting people onto the top wall and having a look, getting onto the artillery to try and take out the siege equipment and siege towers, disillusions, Thomas Fox, local Strail, all coming outside as a scanning kind of portion, Billy D's keeping an eye out on that, we'll come around this way so we can actually have a better view of what's going on, local Strail's going out with bow riders, but that is it really, one set of bow riders isn't really going to do much in terms of comparison to what Pongard did when they had all their units of outriders, armagers and what they're all coming out, you can see dealer for life on the far right hand side here, just being disruptive thing, putting up all the 
ladders just to make sure they're distracted people. Look at Show's just being this big bait and he's just walking. He's just going to cross the map with his bow riders just to be a distraction. Trying to take out the moving siege tower. Do as much as he can. Deal some damage to the units that are pushing the siege tower. Uh, but... Like we said, there's not really much you can do. Disillusion is going to watch the gateway. Lucastrell will get picked up at some point here. There's plenty of heroes chasing after him. Lucastrell is now off his horse and dismounted. He will be taken out and he will be our first death of the battle. Shoot, no doubt. I'm not sure who's going to pick this up. Is it going to be Billy D? Lucastrell is doing his best. Staying on top. Dealer for life up fighting with him. Short sword versus Glaive. Glaive jumps off to his death. And that is the first death of the bat matchup. Like we said, nothing nothing in comparison to what Pongard did on the defence. There is no outrider sally out. There's no complete sally out from all the units. Um, they're just holding up on top of the gates and up on top of the walls. Units are all set up. But Pongard aren't really pushing anything else apart from the siege towers. They're not using any of the units. They're not getting themselves out there and getting taking any of the damage from their, any of the artillery. So they're just trying to keep them safe as much as possible so that they're... Unit count is pretty strong in terms of coming up to when these siege towers eventually reach. This one siege tower was taken out, but the far right siege tower looks like it may make it. It might make it. The far left one is definitely going to make it, and that is it now reached. The left tower has mounted. Maximus might have his units. He's protecting them with his short sword so that the units on the right hand side can push. As you can see, all of Pongard are going to the far right siege tower. They're not caring for the one that's up there first, the left one. That's not a big deal for them. Disillusioned and Mist are still staying outside just to kind of make it look as if we've got units ready to come out here. But as things are, you've got all of Pongard moving some units round to the right hand side here. As Sig and SKW move from the left supply point, coming towards the right supply point, all over to the right hand side wall. Now they're going to all come up the right hand side wall as Odin's Legion have totally left a point three completely no units are up there no units are even on the stairs whatsoever they're all set up somewhere else around the corner around at the bottom of the stairwells and it will be a free a tick for pongard ottovan bismarck all just on the walls look at thomas fox we're going to have to come back in from the outside here and start defending as you can see bismarck vox both trying to get away from asm tree there but as it is, it's going to be a free take for A. And they're just going to be able to set themselves up on the wall. Pongard will be able to get themselves, all their units, all kind of set for a push. SM3 is getting very brave and trying to push down here. He's fell off of the wall, though. And he's, is he going to get picked up? He's just going to stay on top of the wall. The javelin starts to deal some damage, but SM3 is just trying to stay alive as long as possible. He jumps out, but he will get taken out from Sangjan. Um, he picks up the kill there. But Pongard have a free chance to now just get themselves set up, get their units all set up. Red Brave is up on the wall as well, just roaming around, having a look. Billy D just all scanning out to see where the defensive systems are and where the defensive units are set up here for Odin's Legion. And we can see just a couple of units around the corners, just, just at the back of the stairwells here, just for when they push down the stair is kind of what their plan is. Um, it's 12 minutes they've got to defend for, it's going to be a rough time, 14 trebs still available. Um, but Pongard are just doing a fake and bake, you know, the, the whole fake at the top of the stairs and then they're going to go around the right hand side, Pion's over there scanning around to see what unit setups are there, there's no units at the bottom of that stairwell in comparison to the left side siege tower, uh, uh, left side stairs here, so will they come down that right hand side? Crazy Vox, both kind of keeping an eye out there, but there's no units to defend that whatsoever. Lucas Jell's got some units of Cav in the background, the gate goes down as well, and as things stand, Pongard will start making their way down the stairwells. Both stairwells getting pushed at the same time. Katie Peridot falls his death. Ruffle picks up the kill. But now Pongard are making their way to the bottom of the stairs as quickly as they possibly can on both sides here. Just to make sure. But then they are going to go back, stick straight back up. Just to see how quickly the Odin's Legion will rotate their units around to see what they've got there. Give themselves a chance. And the Javelin Sergeants will start making some damage and putting some unit damage into there. You've got Sledge Main, ASM Tree, Critical, all jumping out, going straight out. All the heroes are just outside, coming out inside, trying to take out as many units as possible. All the heroes are just fighting down here as a big cluster, 1v1 and everybody, but just heroes. Well, that happens. All the heroes of Oda's Legion are going to pay attention to what's going on, but Sig, ASM Tree, are they just going to go all the way around the back, straight to the home point, because nothing is on home. Sig is looking for it. He's going up to the wall. It's definitely going to be... I'm going to go 
on to the gate, and we're going to start taking a home point here. Sig is trying to get his horse over. He jumps over the wall. He's going to start capping. Ruffo's going to have to support it. But eight, the home pace is being taken because they're too busy looking at where the rotation is. Sig is going to stay there for so long that I think he might actually get a sneaky cap here, and they're not even going to be able to rotate it quickly enough. Luco Stel is going to have to try and jump over the fence and get there as quickly as he can. He jumps over pretty well, and he's going to get on and disrupt Sig here. Sig sees the uh, Luco coming in, and he gets off the point and comes back and keeps himself alive. Now, Pongard pushing in from the small gateway on the top right hand side here. Tomsky missed all that, trying to rotate units around. Ruffo's going to have to come back around as well. Plenty of heroes looking around, but there's a di big difference in numbers for Pongard in comparison. There's a lot more Pong guards, and as you can see, the things are happening. It's 12v12, but currently the defence are losing heroes quicker than the, the attacking side are. And they're starting to push them back. Pongard will push, start pushing in and start making their way towards this far left supply point. You've got Sig and SKW doing it well just to keep heroes distracted over there. The Trev is coming in onto this uh, the onto the supply point, but um, no units are there. They started rotating around. This disillusioned is rotating around, but they're going to get a good cap here on the supply point. They're going to try and keep. People with units paying attention. Disillusion comes in with a side charge here. How does Disillusion do? He kills Maximus. He kills a couple of units there, but it does look like the unit is going to fall. The unit does fall, and the defense have not managed to secure that area quite quickly. Pongard are going to be able to secure it, push for units forward, and keep trebbing that supply point as things stand. There's no heroes in the back, though. Gelcho might go straight for home here. He's got an opportunity. No heroes are going to watch him. Is Gelcho going to go into the back, straight up the stairwell? Is he going to come and support his team? Trebs are coming in here, but they are starting to push off Pongard. That is a good defence on the supply point. Gelcho sees that the fact is units are all dying. He's going straight for the home point. He doesn't care for the heroes on the supply point at the moment in time. Pongard down to six heroes. Gelcho on home, capping home point. Plenty of units already paying attention to the supply point. But Crazy is going to look at the rotation. He's going to jump around here with his units. The calf is coming on the left-hand side here from Gelcho. But three heroes uh, from Pongard are alive. Two no, we'll make that two. Gelcho is retreating. Crazy manages to push him off, but that's almost halfway capped. We're almost halfway capped with home. And Pongard are now just going to get the supply point for free on this right-hand side. Now they're going to get themselves set up. They're going to grab their units, and then they've got units to push. There's still a fair even spread of units. Pongard with less, a lot less heroes, but how is the defence going to do this now? Odin's leader is going to have to rotate, going to get their units all set up and healed up as quickly as they possibly can and get set up in certain areas of this map now to stop a strong pawn guard push. We've got to stay out of the avoidance of tribes because the tribes are dealing plenty of damage if they're in the correct spots and there's plenty of open spaces for it. I love how everyone stole our strat. <laughs> Tempo tart. So Pongard back up to the 14 and they're getting ready for their push. They're coming down this far right hand side here and coming down the centre. They're going to try and bait both different directions here at this point in time. Peridot, Sig, SKW, Maximus all coming down this right hand side. Every single one of them, the full 15 of them are coming all the way down this left side. Well, plenty of heroes and units are still over on the far right supply point. Will they look to go that way and then switch around again like they normally do? The Treb is incoming. The Treb might actually miss everything completely. It's a little bit of an awkward position in here and it does miss a lot of the units there. A few units in the back that might get taken out, but IPG March is coming in. Plenty of units getting taken out, but Payan's group are pushing together as a, as a group. It's a good rotation here from Odin's Legion, though. They're all coming down the centre, but Gelcho and Dealer for Life have units in the back. Some units of Cav are ready to disrupt and do what they can here. The Treb is incoming here as well to try and stop the defensive system of Odin's Legion. The Treb hits quite a good set of units there. Some of the Fort Abrasio that were there. Pongard are going to have to move around. They're down to 13 heroes. Oda's Legion got a good strong defence in here on the centre area and the centre walkway pretty much. They've got Fort Abrasio all set up in the middle. Peridot falls his death. Pongard down to 13. They're going to have to go back for units here. Zuzu and Ragnarok staying strong here in the right hand side with their modals uh, braced and ready for any units to push here. You've also got Fort Abrasio holding off the little choke points. Pongard are going to have to try and find if something different here. What are they going to do? Are they going to split push this one here or are they going to go all in one go? Pongard have six minutes left on the attack. 
we've got almost the exact same unit counts as well. 666 versus 644. Payan's baiting, trying to see what units are still here under corner. Payan jumps back away. He's now picked up the glaive. As things stand, they're all kind of changing and to go to the centre this way this time. They're going around the centre. As you can see, Oda's Legion are moving, rotating units round. Fortabrasio are going to get moved, but they're not going to get trebbed, which is good. They're, they're getting them out of the positions that they need to be trebbed. And Point Guard are just looking for these opportunities and where they want to be going at this point in time. Both, every single alleyway is kind of watched by either Fortabrasio Fort or Modal. Sorry, guys, I, for that little burp, that's a bit inconsiderate of me. Mean, my bad, apologies. We had a good good steak meal, you know, and uh, it's coming back on me already because I'm trying to speak so quick. Bongard are making it a split push here. Sledge and Gilch are going around the far right hand side to the supply point. Maximus down the, the second right side push, but everybody's coming down the main now here as well. Pseudo Scav trying to come in from behind. The Moda are still there. Critical. ASM Tree are all falling there. Lucas Strail dies to Gilcho. A lot of heroes killed there and a lot of units killed here for the defence. But now Pongard are pushing in from the right hand side. So into the right-hand side. Can they push in through the right-hand side here? This is going to be a tough decision. There's Javelin Sergeant, but the Cav comes in from behind. Dealer's going to pick it up. Payan jumps onto the uh, onto the home point. Their heroes are dying on the defence, and now they're down to nine on the defence. The attack of Pongard is going so, so well. Kiss My Bird's going to try and stop that cap as long as possible, but there's plenty of heroes on Pongard there. Now, nothing they can do on the defence here. They've got to try and make that rotation onto the home point to stop the cap, but there is only one hero that's surviving long enough, and Kiss My Bird will fall to the push of Pongard. Pongard have all their units and heroes on the home point, and that is going to be all she wrote for Odin's Legion. Pongard have managed to get the home point pretty much capped. Tom C will fall to his death. Crazy and Vox are trying to support that. Ottovan, Ragnarok are all coming around. Zuzu is trying to come around. But there's so many units there in comparison. It's just heroes versus the units and heroes of Pongard, which will no doubt win that fight out. No no doubt. There's Cav, there's Keshex, there's Javelins, there's Palace Guards. It's all going to go and do work here. The heroes are trying to get as much as possible. They're trying to bring units as quickly as possible. But will it be enough? Odin's Legion are fighting to their death, but there's seven heroes left on this. And as you can see, 13 on the attack. It's literally three heroes surviving on the point long enough to kick this hold. The trap is incoming. It's going to stop any of these units that are coming to support it. Can they beat off Pongard on this little push here? It's very, very close. It's a very, very close battle with heroes here on the point. The trap hits quite a good amount of units, but it doesn't look like Pongard are going to stay Cap in this point as things stand. Plenty of units coming back in, but here comes a calf charge incoming from Pongard. It stops, but they are starting to use the Armagers as much as possible. Heroes are surviving long enough. Ragnarok's still alive. Thomas Fox still on the point. Heroes are dying. They're down to nine on the defense, but only a ten on the attack. Can the attack keep strong? Their units are coming in. This Lots of units coming in. They've got ISGs from the defense, defending well enough on the point to keep them alive long enough. Disillusion, Zuzu's coming in, Vox is coming in, Crazy's coming in now. What units have we got on this point? Lily needs a couple of heroes to die, and it is all she wrote. Three minutes, it's a strong fight and strong defense on this home point. But here comes the Treb. Is this Treb going to deal the damage to the units that are there and stop the heroes getting on the point? It's only Vox on the point just now. Disillusion's had to jump on. Crazy's jumped off and on. He's keeping himself alive on the point as long as possible. He's the last hero on the point. This will be it. If Crazy gets caught out, he is off of the point. Miss is also off the point. There's plenty of units for Pongard on this fight here. Miss Zuzu is a dual blade. He won't stay long there. He is going to have to jump in and out constantly. Miss is staying alive on the pike, but Miss has got zero HP. He's down. Lucas Strell, he's got to stay on the point, but he he does it. He comes off the point and Pongard pick up the win. What a push. What a strong push. It was literally 15 heroes trying to suicide as much as possible and stay alive as long as possible on that point. That was a tough, tough defense for Odin's Legion. And you know what? It was it was very well done. Very well done for Pongard. They got the units. They got the heroes there as long as possible. Stayed on the point. Whittled down the heroes on the defense. And it eventually came down. Odin's Legion, that was a very good defense. Very good rotations. You were just kind of out-rotated by the pawn guard guys with the multiple flanks, but it's a big fail um, for you guys on the defense, I'm afraid. Or does Legion pick up a, loose, a loss with Payan's team go on to be victors of their 
group without losing an overall set. Payan, MVP for this matchup. Five hero kills, 104 unit kills. Plenty of support units there. Zuzu Demon MVP on the defensive side. Two hero kills. Lots of defense. Like, it was definitely a lot closer matchup this time around. As you can see, a lot closer this time. Three minutes left there was. We were pretty even on hero deaths. We were pretty even on unit kills. Uh, it just was when the heroes and kills were coming around. Very, very good from Pong Guard. Very good bait to be able to jump onto the cap, start grabbing the cap while all these fights were going on and the heroes weren't rotating quick enough and you slowly whittled down that point to the stage where with a few minutes left, you managed to pick up the fight and get the win. Very well done. Very strong attacks for Pongard. Very strong defence from Pongard.